It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Thanks. Yeah. It's an exciting day. We thank Jesus for it. We thank him for it, and we thank God for just all his many mercies and grace that he's bestowed upon us. Amen. And you know, I was thinking that through the giving of the, of the gifts and everything, that nothing can compare to what God has given us. Amen. And so you know, true. truly, a man of God is a great gift to the saints. Yes. You know, to feed us with knowledge and understanding. And you know, it's, it's God have always, he said in his word that we give the, the ministers that labor in the word double honor. And then, you know, it's, it's occasion like this here when it's reversed, then God used him to give to us. And so it's a privilege to me to introduce the man of the hour, the honorary Pastor Alan Harrington. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Amen. Thank God for 
so much mercy. So much mercy, so much goodness, so much he's given all of us. God has given us his best. Thank God for his word. And you can't help but glorify God and praise him for his goodness. There were some people once who asked Jesus, said, what can we do that we can work the works of God? And he told them, he said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom God has sent. That's a work of, that God has done on you. And in order to work the works of God, God must have already done his work on us, Amen. given us a salvation, deposited his spirit in us. God must do the work. It's going to be so sad as, as uh, Jesus talked about it. And he said, well, in, the last, in, in the, the last day, men are going to come and say, Lord, didn't I do? I preached for you. I, I sang for you. I, I just, the, just went the gamut for you. Poured out my life to you for you. And being the just God that he is, he said, he, look, it sounds like he's going to give, give everybody a chance to present themselves and present their case. And then, it's in St. Matthew, we're not going to read it. You can find it when you get home, St. Matthew, about seven chapters, oh, 721. And he said, after they do all that talking about how much they, they loved him and what they did for him, and even to the point of casting out devils in his name, he said, well, then he's going to tell them, I never knew you. And that's why it's so very important to know that God has done a work on your life. That is the, the most important thing of, of all. And then again, there was another time when Jesus told some people, and they were good, good folks, religious folks and all. And he said, if you don't truly believe, if you don't believe that I am here, you will die in your sins. And that's the, the worst thing that could ever happen to anybody to leave here, to go into eternity without God, without Jesus, without having that, that relationship with God, not just church membership, but relationship with God. That's, that's, that's the most important thing you can have. And when God does a work on your life, we've been talking a lot lately about, uh, well, the other week it was about being the light of the world and, and, and who do you look like, whose image do you bear, you know what? Uh, has God deposited his spirit in you? What, what fruits of the spirit? You can't bear those fruit of the spirit of God unless God has deposited his spirit in you. Then something starts to happen. You can't help it. It talks about in Corinthians how that we are a new creation. When a person really knows God, when, when they meet God, and first of all, Jesus said that. He said in St. John, he said, well, no man can come to me, no man, nobody no, can come to me except the spirit of my father draw him. God must draw us to Jesus. And he said, I raise him up at, at the last day. He said, I raise him up. So once you've been brought to him, once you've been not, not just a church, like joined the church, but you, you've met God, he's revealed himself to you. You've been born into the family of God, you have become that new creature, a new creature. You have a dual nature, that new creature in, in Christ Jesus. You're a new person. You become the light of the world. That's what we're to do. We're, we're, we're to, to lighten somebody's way, to, to guide other people on the path of life, to be a beacon for people to be able to, to point them to Jesus. He said, you're the salt of the world. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember him speaking about that? You're, you're the salt of the earth. We're to bring flavor to other people's lives. And not only in those days was salt used just for, for flavor, it was used, and I, I imagine in some cases today it still is, used to preserve to preserve. We are to be a blessing to other people. Believers are to be a blessing to other people. And it's impossible 
once you've met God, once you've met God and you, and, and you know that no matter who or what you were, no matter your, your shortcomings, your, your missteps, when you fall, God picks us up now. You know it's all by the grace of God. You become so appreciative of grace, so appreciative of mercy, forgiveness for one. I believe in my heart, I believe that in my heart. It is impossible for a believer to hate anybody. You might have been, you might, you, you might have, well, that's Bible too, not, that's in the book. How can a man love God whom he's never seen if he can't, if he can't love his brother who he sees? You know, hatred's not of God. It becomes impossible for a believer to hate anybody. You might not like what people do, but you don't hate that person. You know, you can't, you can't hate them. It becomes, and that's why it's so impossible for some people to forgive. They can't forgive because they don't have that spirit of God in them to promote that. Impossible. Well, I have to read that one. Since, okay, got to read it right quick. First John, right quick. Let's get that one, then we'll move on. And, uh, all right, first John, third chapter. Let, let's go here. Preacher with the, the starting with the 10th verse. And, then, and, and we'll see what God wants us to do. Jesus talked about it. Love one another as I have loved you. We should be able to lay down our lives for the brothers. We, we ought to be able to, to put aside our own, say, misconceptions about God, our own preconceived thoughts about God. We, we need to stop trying to justify our sins, you know? We need to stop, we need to stop justifying hating or justifying not liking. We need to stop justifying backbiting one another, Amen. talking about each other. Yes, no, not in the house of God. Not in God's family. No. Brother, okay, let's, let's, let's go. First, First John, third chapter, okay. tenth verse. All right. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the, and the children of the devil. Mm -hmm. Both of them made seen. Now, this needs to be read in churches, synagogues, everywhere. Go ahead. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. He's not of God. How can we do righteousness? How can we be righteous when the Bible says that there is none righteous? No, not one. How can a person be righteous when that same prophet Isaiah in the sixth, fourth chapter said, talked about how all of our righteousnesses, the best lives that we can live, in the sight of God are like what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. So how, how can we do righteous? God must first work his righteous work on you and me. He must first do that. God must give us his righteousness in exchange for our faith in his gospel and in his word. Okay. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, mm -hmm. neither he that loveth not his brother. Wait a minute. Is that, is that a simple statement? Is that plain? Yes, sir. Neither he that loves his brother. It says that if a person doesn't, brother or sister, a person who doesn't love their brother is not of God. That's simple. It takes, it, it takes no heavy revelation to see that. You know, and, and, and people try to get away from, you know, like, it's like we want to believe that God is all about us. When are we going to be about him? Amen. Everything is about God. Okay, let, let's, let's read, brother. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, yes, that we is. should love one another. Amen. That's, that's one of the first I heard, yes, that we should love one another. Not like one another. Amen. Not just tolerate one another. And, 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 and we do. Jesus said, he put it a different way. Jesus said, I command you. Yes, sir. Amen. See, the love of God has to be really, and you can't legislate love. 
in a person's heart. He, com he commanded love in our hearts. He said, I command you, this is my commandment, that you love one another. Not just like, not just get along, and, and you can't fake it. See, God knows. We, we, we can fool people, but we can't fool God. We can't, God knows us. Yes, sir, he does. Yes, sir. Praise God. That's why I thank him so much. God knows us, and he still loves us. Praise God Almighty. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. we should love one another. Mm -hmm. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. So, so the world has its own kind of love. Jesus talked about the world loves its own. That's a different kind, not a godly love. But don't love like Cain, whose love permitted him to kill his brother. And that's, that's what people want to do. We want to ignore the godly aspect of, of, of the, the teachings. Well, all, all the teachings of the word, of God's word, are, are godly. But we want, to, we want to ignore the full force of what God is telling us sometimes in these scriptures. We, Man, who doesn't like it? I, I love to read the Lord is my shepherd. Sounds good to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> I like that. I, I love to know that God, he, he's blessing my life, my son. I love to read that. But what about the rest of it? What about the responsibility I have toward God? What about the responsibility I, I have toward God's people and, 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 and with this world? We have responsibility. All of us do. We are put here for a reason. That purpose, yes, we, we, we're here. See, God didn't save us just to sit us up. Like, how many of y'all have curios in your house? Your little, little cabinets with your little, what, what the older people call with your little whatnots on it. Y'all remember that? Don't, miss, don't break my whatnots. Okay. It's your little knickknacks. <laughs> so God didn't save us just to put us on the shelf of his curio so he could pass by and look at us every day and, and tell us how pretty we are. We are here for a purpose, Amen. to serve God. And, and so what does God need that we have? When, when, he, when he said of himself, he had David to prophesy it, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. We know God doesn't get hungry. He's God. He said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you what. Because the world is mine. Amen. The earth is mine. The cattle of a thousand hills belong to everything. And, and you know what? Every day we, we live, we eat. We, we, we eat from the hand of God. Sometimes without even thanking him. Come on, brother. Let's, let's, let's go. We're let Not this Cain, who was of that wicked uh -huh. one, and slew his brother. Mm -hmm. And wherefore slew he him? Why? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Read it. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. So that should come as no surprise. If the world hates you. Amen. Don't be surprised about that. That's, that's life. It's part, it's part of this, this journey. Go ahead. We know that we have passed from death unto life mm -hmm. because we love the brethren. That'll tell you who you are. If you have the love of God in your heart for the brothers and sisters in Christ, you know that you, you've been, and you, can, you have confessed Jesus as your savior. You love him, you received him as your Lord and savior, and you have the genuine love of God in your heart. For God, first of all, most of all, and for the brethren, this identifies you right here. <laughs> you know that you've been born again. You know you've been saved. Go ahead. <laughs> he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Th th read that part again. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. That person has not been born again. Amen. It doesn't matter how much church they have. It doesn't matter that they've never missed a church service. It doesn't matter that they've always participated in everything the church has done. It doesn't matter. And that's why it's gonna be, man, that's gonna be one of the, well, it's gonna be one of the worst days 
for so many millions of people to stand before God and say, don't you remember, I did. I sang, I preached, whatever. And to hear those words, I never knew you. That's, that's scary, man. That's scary. We know we've passed from death unto life because we love the brother. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Read, read that last one. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Come on. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Plain as day. Amen. Plain as day. And Jesus talked about that kind of thing. I mean, just in different places over and over and over again. He warned people about simply uh, entering into the religious world and not entering into life with him. He, he warned people against certain things. So we've been born again, those who have. People have been saved. Everybody has a mission. Your passions, and, and by the way, somebody mentioned something about always about learning. You must Never stop learning. Man, once you stop learning, I don't care how old you are either. Once you stop learning, man, you, you're going to miss the joy and wonder of God. When you stop learning, the, life has no more wonder for you, you know? No, no more excitement. But you find, though, that if you've been born again, you might have noticed even before you came to know Jesus that you you had something inside of you that, that you were like driven to do. Things, you, uh, uh, capabilities or abilities that, that you had that were a, a little above the norm. And you're passionate about, about those things. Well, he, he did that to Jeremiah. He, he told Jeremiah, he said, before you, see, God put his work in Jeremiah before he came out of the womb. Some people are equipped, and, and I believe in my heart that all believers, and we, we can't get into it, going back to the parable of the talents, all believers are gifted some way or another. And that, then the reason they are, we watch over God's stuff, his gifts, his, his, he makes us stewards of his grace, his goodness, certain properties of God. so that we can be a blessing to other people. The book of Philippians, the second chapter, brother. Starting with the first verse. It's good to see all of you here today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The so number one, love each other. No, no matter what, love each other. And you, you can't help but go back to the, that scripture about how God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, and he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Be able to reconcile differences. Praise God. Amen. Philippians, the book of Philippians, second chapter. And let's start with the first verse. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, Amen. if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of, and mercies. Any bowels and mercies, deep mercies of God and, and feeling and care of God. If there be any of this in you, fulfill ye my joy, Amen. that ye be like-minded, having the same love, yes. being of one accord, of one mind. That's what it's all about, and to live in oneness. Go ahead, read let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. What does that mean? To esteem the other better than ourselves. To make sure that we don't consider ourselves to be better than any man. Yes, that we're not better than our brothers and, and sisters in Christ. We're, we're not better than any man. We're not better than the man or woman on the street. That's where most of us came from. Yes, sir. Amen. And the truth is, how, what, how's that saying go? There but for the grace of God, Amen. go I. Amen. So let's look at the, to esteem others better than ourselves. Go, read it. 
Look not every man on his own thing. This is what I want to get to. Go ahead. But every man also on the things of others. What? What in the world? Life is not just about me and mine. And when God saved us, put us in his ministry, gave us the ministry of reconciliation, he didn't want us to just, and, and, and we, we get like that sometimes. We, I think we talked about it the other week, how that God was warning people, he said, remember, when, when you, you, you come in, into, in, into wealth or prosperity, whatever it is, that you remember that it's the Lord your God who does what? Gives you power to get wealth. For what purpose? Hmm? In blessing the world. Help get to promote the gospel and touching the lives of other people. Life is not about, and yeah, God wants us to be go-getters. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to. But it's not just so we can heap up like the rich man in, 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 the, was it, in, in the gospel of Luke. He said, I've got so much, I, I've got so much goods, I don't, I don't have enough room to put all this stuff. So I think I'll just tear down these barns and build greater barns. I'll keep it all to myself. If that's not what life's, life's about. We are to be a blessing to humanity. It's not just about us and, and me and, and yeah, God wants, yeah, definitely, you better take care of your family. Take care of your, your, your life, yourself, provide for your family, and, and, and we'll, we'll look at that here in just a minute. The, but to be concerned about other people. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Life isn't just about us. And most people have, have this idea about God that all God wants to do is, it's not like we're, we're his servants or, or we admire him so much. We want God to serve us. And most people have really gotten into that, uh, what they call the prosperity account. And, and it's, God wants you to prosper and be in health. But we think that God just wants, that's what people think, that God is just supposed to serve us. That's not the way it is. There were some people here in, in the book of Numbers, and in the first verse, it says, Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And they saw this land, the land of Jazer, and the land of Gilead, and behold, it was a place for cattle. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation saying, talked about all these different lands. <laughs> Fourth verse, it says the country, these con even the country that the Lord smote before the congregation is a land for cattle and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given to thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. We've come this far under your leadership. We've come this far on this promise of God. We believed you to this point. But we found something that suits us. The journey is not over. But we found our niche in life. Come on now. We don't want to go over to the promised land. Well, it worked out. They talked to Moses. Moses being a, a, a reasonable man. And, and the Bible teaches us that today in the New Testament too. How the ministers of God, men of God, yeah, preach the word. Stay with the word without compromising. No matter where, where in the, at home, in church, or what, whatever. Stay with the truth no matter what. And the Bible teaches us that we're not to be lords over God's flock. Amen. These are the sheep of God. These are God's people. So we're not to like have dominion over that kind of way, like hard over God's people. 
So Moses was a reasonable man. But first he had to straighten out, you're gonna discourage your brothers. If you do this thing, you're gonna discourage, man, Moses, and I'm, I'm glad that, that, that he stood on that. See, if you, if you, because you found comfort right here, what about the welfare? of your brothers and sisters in Christ. And, 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 and in our case, it's not just where we are. We can't forget the rest of this dying world. Amen. We can't, because we're comfortable. We can't for, forget that there are, other, there are people in, in, in this life who genuinely need assistance. And where we, where we can, we should render aid. So they agreed. Moses told them, said, no, you can't do that. So they, they agreed because they knew that in order to go into the promised land, that it was going to take some war. It was theirs. God freely gave it. He promised it to them, gave it to them. Now go take it. And that, well, that's a good lesson in itself. Nothing is going to just be handed to you in life on a silver platter. You have to go take it. You have to earn it. You have to study for it. You have to work. You have to investigate. So they said, well, this is what we'll do. Let us go ahead and set up homes for our wives and children. Let, let's, let us give them a place to live. Let us build fences for our herds and flocks and we'll leave them here but we will go armed so I'm still a part of the battle and we will go armed before you over Jordan until every tribe has received what God has promised Amen. but to have that selfish heart when first they were, they were misled they were thinking that it was just about what they want. We get like that sometimes. So let's go see if they did it, brother. Moses had to straighten them out on that. It's in the same chapter. Let's just, okay, the 30th verse. This is where they promised that, and they did. But if they will not pass over with you on, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As the Lord has said unto thy servant, so will we do. Go ahead, brother. We will pass over armed before the Lord in the land of Canaan, that the possession of our inheritance on this side of Jordan may be ours. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, read it. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, and unto half the tribe of Manasseh, mm -hmm. the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sion, Sihon. He gave them their inheritance, yes, the, the inheritance on that side yes, sir. of Jordan. So what does God want us to do? Always be willing to participate with God's people. And always be willing to, not in, in your lifetime, to know that as God, God blesses you for a purpose. Amen. And, and that, he, yeah, we want God's blessings, but what are we going to do with it? He blesses us so that we're better able to be a blessing to other people. Amen. That's what it's all about. Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Praise God. You never forget where you come from. How do you pronounce it? Is that Rechabites or Rechabites? What is legacy? Anybody know? Always. That's what posterity should be all about. Maintaining the legacy. I mean, good legacy. Of your ancestors. This book is God's message to us. And I remember from day one, it, it scared me the first time. 
ever heard the word of God on Blackwood Street? Pastor, I was teaching out of Revelations. And then he went to Romans, the third chapter. I'll never forget it. About what a man really is, you know, none good, no, not one. And, and no matter, and I, I always thought I was you know, in my dirt, drug crazed, everything. But I always thought I was, I was a pretty nice guy to know. You know, I, people should be glad to know me, you know. <laughs> but I was all right. And, and I saw myself, and it, it frightened me. And from that day, not just that day, but every day thereafter, somebody mentioned having service on, on Wednesday, Friday night, and Sunday. Sometimes twice on, and don't let there be a special meeting. Hmm, <laughs> some of y'all don't know about special meetings. <laughs> You'd be so afraid. People really lost fear of God. <laughs> But everything was always straight up and down the line. It's always open your Bible. It's always God's, what God said, in spite of what tradition does, in spite of what tradition says. What did God say? That's the legacy that I pray to God he will continue to preserve in this church. Yes, sir. Not our own, a legacy is something, it's, it's like principle. I, not just, an inheritance is, is, is stuff you get. That's inheritance, that's not a legacy. Yes, sir. That's right. You can inherit a, a, a house, a car, whatever it is, money, whatever. But a legacy are the principles of the family. Amen. What that yes, family sir. stood for. Yes, sir. Stood for. I say, believe what they believed. Amen. And these Rechabites, y'all know they weren't all like fully, they were, they, but, but they did. They, they, their daughters married, into, married some of the priests. They were sort of incorporated into, into Israel. The Kenites descended down from, what's it, Hobab, who, who, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, who's the high priest of Midian. He, he knew about God. And they always showed Israel kindness. And, and this, this man, he declared that no matter, say we, we know God doesn't disallow us or forbid us from having homes or, uh, or having crops or whatever. He said, but we'll never, we'll never, do, we'll never, say we won't drink alcohol. This is what they did. We, we'll live the life of nomads, no matter what. We'll live in tents, even after everybody else starts building houses. We'll always remember God. And that everything belongs to him. We'll honor him knowing that we're unworthy. So it just so happened that uh, the prophet they, they were some faithful people. That was their family, that, their principle. Their, every family should have a, a, a legacy of some sort. And they upheld it. Even when the prophet offered them, come into, like, into the temple and refresh yourself, have a drink. Drink some wine, have some wine, refresh yourself. They would not do it. Even an invitation of the prophet. They would, not, they would not do it. Because they wanted to stick with the legacy of their ancestors. The Rechabites. They, were, they, were, they evolved into like the Kenites. You know, the Kenite family. And, and they always served and traveled with Israel. They, they, they began to work to assist in the, some of the duties of the temple. Legacy is important. Principles. What do you stand for? What do you believe? And the out is it's so simple. Our legacy is recorded in this book. 
That's the legacy. Yes, sir. No matter what we feel, I might not like you, Scotty, but I love you. Yes. I like you all right. You all right. <laughs> you all right. Yeah. You know, we love each other. We live without confusion, without hate. Amen. Amen. Confusion is not of God. This is of, of, of the devil. Amen. That's the legacy. So we're here to live in the peace of God, to love one, one another. We're gonna, and yes, we're gonna carry on the principle as yeah, I almost see it did. Bishop did. He carried on the principles that were the principles that were established by God Himself. His Word. Yes, sir. It's God's Word. Yes, sir. So, what does God want us to do? Let's go to Isaiah 58 yes, sir. very quickly. And I, I hope that this will help you. You want to turn your life around. You want your life to be different. And, oh, and again, make sure your motive, make sure that you have proper motive for doing anything. Whether it's giving or whatever. You, you, can, you can give, if, if you give just with the motive, well, I'm gonna give this and make God, bless me because he said, he said, give and it shall be given. He said that, didn't he? Good measure, press down, he said that. So we, we can't deceive God. Give with, with the right, I'm gonna give just to get. I really don't care. I'm gonna help the, the homeless, I'm gonna help the poor, because the, the, the Bible said that if a person gives to the poor, well, he, he, that person is lending to the Lord, and God will bless him. I'm gonna give just for the blessing. It's not about that. Man. The blessing is in being able to give. Yes, That's the blessing. Being able to give of yourself financially, be able to, to give of yourself, period, of your time, your effort, your thought, your prayer, to, to be a giver. Amen. We can't just go through the mechanics of religion. The methodical practice of religion and, and expect that, that we're pre and, and, and believe that we're pleasing God. That's not where it is. It's from the heart. It comes from the heart. Sincerity. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. The pure. And pure meaning what now? The sincere in heart. That's what it translates yes, to. Sir. The sincere in heart. Yes, sir. Sincerity. So Isaiah, we're going to close out here with, with Isaiah the prophet. A lot of good information. Isaiah, Jer Jeremy, these prophets were powerful men. Isaiah 58, and let's start. What can we do? Well, Micah said, well, he showed you. How can I please God? He showed you, old man, what is good. And what does the Lord require? We know one thing he requires, that we do what? Love one another. We know that for a fact. What does the Lord require? of you but to do what? Justly. justly. To do justly, to, to, to live and treat people fairly, to treat people right, to do the right thing, to love mercy, to be willing and always ready to pardon someone, to forgive. Do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. And that knocks, that, that, that knocks human ideas out, out, out of the way. It moves this old flesh aside when we, when we live in faith to please God. So brother, let's get this and we're gonna go. Here's just one more thing. Isaiah 58. And let's start with the fifth verse. We're not gonna read it all. Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. What does God want out of us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, if you give to the poor, man, you're lending to the Lord. 
God will bless you. He'll bless you for being concerned about other people. I said 58 and five. Yes, sir. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is, that's, that's what we consider fast to be. When we, when we fast, you know what fasting is. Fasting is good. To do without food or water or whatever for, for a certain amount of time. Determined by you. A promise that you make to God that you're going to do without, you're not going to eat anything. Or, or you're not going to drink anything for a certain period of time. You're, you're going to seek God's face as you go about your day. You're going to sacrifice. You're going to get this flesh under control. You're not always going to yield to the desire desires of this flesh. You're going to train yourself in the art of self-denial, which there are a lot of us that haven't been doing that too much here lately. <laughs> so God said, he said, is this the, did I choose, is that the fast that I want? Is this the fast that I've chosen for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? Hallelujah. And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? To look all pious. To look all religious. To look like we're really going through it for the Lord. We're really doing the Lord a favor. And seeking God's face. Yes, sir. Go ahead, read it. Wilt thou call this a fast? And an acceptable day unto the, to the Lord. It's talking about our own efforts. What we like to show people. We, we like to show people our, our religious side. We want to look spiritual. Like we're deeply involved with the Lord, man. This goes far beyond what we're capable of presenting on the outside. All this has to be motivated from the inside, from the inside out, and it causes activity. It causes us to do something. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? This is what God loves. He says, I chose this fast. You want to deny yourself. Okay, do this, says the Lord. All right? To loose the bands of wickedness. Stop being so wicked. First of all, loose them on yourself. By the grace and power of God, loose the bands of wickedness. Stop involving yourself in things that you know do not please God. Amen. Cut the cord on that mess. Amen. Loose the bands of wickedness. Okay. To undo the heavy burdens. Un undo people who are Oh man, and Jesus talked about it. Didn't he? He said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, who burden down, and I'll give you rest. And here he's saying that we are to undo the heavy burden. Yes, sir. We're to make somebody's life a little bit better. Amen. We're, we're to make the burden that, that people are carrying just a little bit lighter. And it calls, us, it calls for, rather, some sacrifice. Make somebody's life just a little bit more, more pleasant. Undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. Man, so how can you let the oppressed go free, brother, if you're the oppressor? Yes, Come sir. on now. Amen. If you're mean to people all the time. Amen. Yes, sir. If your attitude is so nasty, you can't stand yourself. Let the oppressed go free. Yes, sir. Don't hold people in prison. Well, how can you do that? Set people free. Let the oppressed go free. People that you have imprisoned in your own heart, in our, with, our own, with our own attitudes of unforgiveness. Man. Oh, man, that's a powerful thing right there. Yes, sir. Forgiving people, man that's, that, man, that's a powerful tool that God has given us. Amen. We've been forgiven so much. We won't get into the parable. We've for, been forgiven in eternity of sins. All our sins have been washed away, put away. But we like to hold other people in captivity. 
We won't set people free. We like to hold grudges. We remember what people did to us back in 1932. I remember. <laughs> I remember to this day, you know. So that's the way we are as hu Man. human beings. And they never get up, can ever move past it. Why? Because they're stuck. Not only have they imprisoned somebody, but they are stuck in that filthy, nasty attitude of unforgiveness. Man. Let the oppressed go free. When you free somebody, you've just freed yourself. Man. I'm telling you now, yes, you have. You brought, brought freedom to, you, man, and peace of mind to yourself. You blessed your own life by being a blessing to someone else. That's the way it works. Yes, sir. Let the oppressed go free. Yes, sir. Jesus taught about it. He talked about it in that parable. About forgiving. He said, if you don't forgive, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. Some people are tormented. They can't be never can be happy. Because they're tormented with misery. Because they've been given, because Jesus said it, that's why they are. So if you don't forgive them, neither will your father forgive you. So you'll be given over to who? Tormentors. To the tormentors. That's in the book. That's all yes, in the scripture. It's Bible. People can't be happy. Be, you can't be happy and hate other people. Come on now. You can't be happy and not forgive other people. Make ourselves feel justified in not loving. There's no way. No way. Praise God. God, folks, is God. Yes, sir. Only God is God. Yes, sir. And what he says, he want, that's what he wants. He wants nothing else. No excuses, nothing else. God wants what he wants. Amen. He does. He, he knows how we can live a, man, you want to live a good life. Do you want to live a good a, a life of freedom? You want to prosper? Be able to give, be a blessing to other people, be able to help this people in this dying world. Do this right here. Yes, sir. You want, you want a, a, a new life in your new life as a believer? Yes, sir. Let the oppressed go free. Yes, sir. The Bible even talks about, Brother Peter wrote about it. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. This is God's word. Lay aside as babes now. Not that God's going to take it. Don't wait on God to deliver you from it because he's not. He told us, yes, sir. you lay aside yes, all sir. malice, yes, sir. guile, which is yes, deceit. Yes, sir. You lay it aside. Yes, sir. God has empowered us to do that. You don't want to see people live. You don't want to see, see people make it. You don't want to see them be productive. Yes, sir. You harbor animosity. You can't be happy like that. Man. No point in lying saying I'm happy when you hate. It's not true. Yes, sir. No way. Okay, let the oppressed go free. Yes, sir. And that ye break every yoke. Thank you, Jesus. You can do it today. You can have a new life today. Go ahead. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? To deal your bread to the hungry. Hallelujah. To be able to give to other people. Amen. To help the hungry. And I know, I know, everybody knows that. You all know. You, you, you have a lot of hustlers out there who get, get out of bed every morning, dirty themselves up a little bit, write up their signs, we'll work for food, a homeless veteran or what. You know, you, yeah, you got people hustling. Yes, but sir. you have some people who, who are really in dire need of help out there too. Man, yes, sir. And you have organizations around town and other places, different places, who, who, who specifically, I mean, they, they target. Uh, the populations of, of the homeless and the, the hungry. You can help them, give to them, help them, work with them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People you know in your neighborhoods might be doing without. Give, it's not just about us. Yes, sir. Deal your bread to the hungry. Yes, sir. So if you do fast, if you say, well, I'm not going to eat, uh, I'm not going to eat dinner today. Even that, that little money that, that you, you don't eat. So if you're going to eat $30 worth, worth of food, for dinner or uh, 15 or whatever, take that $30 and, and put it, give it to somebody, you know? Buy somebody some food. Go buy somebody some groceries. Yes, sir. Go, go help the sinners for the homeless. Go help them. He said, you deal your bread. Don't think that you're blessed just so we can say, well, there's a, there's a church like that that's recorded, talked about in Revelation. 
People that believe I'm full and I have need of nothing. Amen. Come on now. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. That's that's in the book. We're yes, not. Sir. You can get it, but if you want to, we're not going to read it. I'm full and have need of nothing, and, right. and don't even realize that we're poor and blind yes, sir. and wretched and miserable yes, sir. when we can't see the needs of other people. Yes, sir. When we don't have our hearts. If you have a heart of compassion, compassion is not just a feeling, folks. Yeah, you have a little feeling. You have a feeling about it. Compassion is just like love. Love is not just a feeling. You can feel it, sure. But love is a verb. Love, love is action. Yes, sir. Compassion. You, you find that Jesus was moved with compassion. His compassion caused him to heal other people, to help other people, to give whatever he did. It, it causes a work. So God says you deal your bread to the hungry. Yes, sir. If you can't, if you can't eat this, don't, don't think about going with Jesus. I'm serious. If you can't think about mercy and love and grace and goodness, the goodness of God, giving yes, sir. everything. Salvation started with giving for God. What? So loved the world, he gave his only begotten yes, son. Everything's about that. Praise God, bro. Let's, let's, let's read here. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. Now, don't take Charles Manson home with you. <laughs> <laughs> don't roll up on somebody on, on the corner. Say, come on, Charles, get in. <laughs> you can give to organizations that help the homeless. You can do that. Uh, you know the times we live, we're living in some very crucial, critical times. You can, and some of us have been known to do that, to, to, to set up housing for people, or, or, or to, uh, to help somebody with a hotel for a few days or whatever, you know? Yes, you Take people off the street, help them out. Give them some comfort. Bring the poor that are cast out to your house to take care of it's all about taking care of a need. That's what it's all about. Helping others. Go, go ahead, bro. We're about to close out here. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. That you cover him. Thy clothes for him. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. And if, if your own relatives are in need or approach you, don't ignore that. See, but we have this attitude, well, I got mine. That's nasty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You didn't always have yours. Amen. And you don't have yours now. Yes, sir. We have what God allows us to enjoy. Amen. The earth is the Lord's. Yes, sir. That's true. Yes, sir. And the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God. Amen. And when we honor and respect him, now God, yes, use wisdom. Take care of your house. Man, be productive. Take care of your life. Use wisdom, but always be there to, to be the hand of God in somebody else's life. Yes, sir. Always be there for other people. Don't hide yourself from your own flesh, and then something will happen. Yes, something will most definitely happen for you. Don't ignore the needs and the plight of other people. Never. Don't, don't do that. I mean, you can't help everybody. Goes without saying, you can't. No way. Then something will happen for you. We're going to close out. Just, just read through it. Yes, sir. Then shall thy light break forth as yes. the morning. Yes, it will. Yes, you want sir. a different life? Yes, sir. You want a change of life? Yes, sir. You, do you need some, some collard greens or some turnip greens? You, corn, you need a harvest? Sow some seed. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, okay. sir. Sow, sow, sow in somebody else's life. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. And thine health shall spring forth Thank speedily. You, so this will bless you in your body also. Yes, Read it. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Thank you, Jesus. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Be your, like your real guard. Yes, sir. God's got your back. Yes, sir. So if, they say if. Yes, sir. See, we like to say God's got our back without us doing anything. No, yes, God's sir. got your back if you do this. Yes, sir. Your health will spring forth. Your light will come forth like, like the morning. Your health shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness. God will always bless you more and more. It's all a process. Amen. 
to be able to give and to help others more and more some way or another. And the glory of the Lord, because you always got somebody. Well, do the right thing toward God. You're always going to have somebody who's going to always be trying to stab you in the back. Man. I hate to even get on that. That's the truth. Yes, sir. People don't want to see you live. Not, I mean, it, not, not all people, but there are some. Amen. There's some people like that. Who, that and hate for that. They, they don't want to see you to live in, in, in peace and, and enjoy the goodness and blessing of God. So God will take care of it for you. Yes, sir. God's got your back. He'll be your rear guard. Yes, sir. And, and what will happen? Then shalt thou call. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord shall answer. Oh, man, you want to hear from God? Yes, sir. You, you do obey, do what he said right here. And you'll call out to him and he'll answer. Go ahead. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If, if thou take away from the midst of the, the yoke. The yoke. The, the yoke. Yes. Crippling other people. Yes, sir. Captivating, hurting other people. Yes, sir. If you get that out of your life, if you take away the yoke. Yes, sir. The putting forth of the feet. Oh, brother, come on. And speaking vanity. Oh, brother. The putting forth of the finger. What's that talking about? Pointing fingers, accusing. making accusations, always yes, accusing other people. Yes, sir. Let people alone. Amen. Take your mind off. Take take your mouth off people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take a good look in the mirror sometimes. That's that's how we do the word. That's how we do the word. The Bible says God's word is like a mirror, and it is. You, you see yourself when you, when you look at it. But it's funny how people can hear hear a message, especially don't don't let it be a hot one. This is not hot. Don't let it be a hot one. And folks will get that little attitude. I know that was really tearing them up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you, you didn't hear nothing? <laughs> you, you were looking in the mirror. How many, how many do that? Look in your mirror at home and you see somebody else. Look at, see James in the mirror. Stop making accusation on people. Stop backbiting people. Yes, stop sir. lying on people. Yes, and and, you, and we stop judging. Jesus, oh, he talked about it. Judge not. No, please stop that. Because we make ourselves God. We put ourselves in that position. When we think we're God, we have a right. We make You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.